Hello, my name is Gary Shotton. I'm here uh, as a part of IBB Talks, Inspiring Better Business. And today we're going to talk about the question, why doesn't the government help us? Government help. You know, I've been uh, talking with uh, groups uh, in mostly in East Africa, but uh, developing nations, and uh, we try to answer tough questions. And that's one of the questions that has come up for years, my travels. Why won't the government give us some help? We need some help. Man, we could get started if the government would just do something to get us off going. Why don't we get some help? Well, I might uh, bust that bubble or uh, change your opinion when I talk about that. So uh, what, uh, the, the design of the government, in my opinion, has never been there, has never been the purpose of the government to hand out money. It's not the purpose of the government to uh, make business themselves. They're not going to buy your goods unless they have a need for maybe some paper and they're using paper in their offices. Sure, they're going to buy some paper, but they're not going to help you get started in that regard. My, I have a lot of experience with this. I have my dad uh, was in a position to get government help. I have had government help in the United States, so I'm going to talk about that when the government should really help. But first of all, I'm going to have to in my opinion, describe the role of the government. What is the purpose of the government? Those officials that can help uh, the economy get better. I do believe that there is responsibility. And my analogy is this. I'm holding here a soccer ball. It's a very nice looking football, you would call it in most Western countries. And you're very familiar with the sport of football. And uh, I will tell you that uh, the rules are pretty well the same all around the world. That way we can play the World Cup uh, tryouts and the World Cup playoffs from regions down to the final World Cup. And I watched some of this this last year. And you know, the referees in that World Cup better know the rules, hadn't they? They better know what's offsides. They better know what's out of bounds. They better know uh, the details of the game so when something comes up, they can call it correctly. When there's a foul, when to give a yellow card, when to give a red card. Those are things that, the, that referees should know. But the referees should never touch the ball during play. You know, if a referee was in the wrong spot and a goal was, uh, was accidentally bounced off the referee and it, and it didn't go on the goal, I mean, we would have an uproar. That referee probably better move out of the country because there's going to be some death threats on that guy because he was in the wrong spot when it came to being a referee. The referee's goal is to keep the game rolling, to keep the game moving forward, to, for everyone to obey the rules and then to enforce the rules fairly. Well, that's what your government should do. They should never be in business. They should never actually create a business environment that gives one person an, an advantage over the other. You know, if the government got involved handing out money to you, where would it end? How are you going to get the, the end of this line? They gave it to some people and not the other. That would be like playing a game of football when the referee wasn't being fair. So the government is not designed to do that. Your government should be doing things that would help keep the playing field even, keep the score, uh, the ability for you to score and keep it fair. Well, we have some problems. We know that. In developing nations, uh, a lot of times we know that certain officials inside the government, they get their chance. Uh, it's kind of like the rainy day fund. You know, they've been in government five years and they're coming towards the end of the, their term. And I know this happens. I know it has happened. That, boy, they better empty the coffers. They better take all the money they can because this was the part of the payout of them winning the election and being elected and serving for five years. That's not fair. They should be paid a fair salary. They should have some benefits, a fair amount, but never should they steal from the government. That's going to be a, 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 a downside for this whole thing. So you've got to push for that. Can I guarantee that won't happen? No. But, you know, get in there and, and get some officials that understand business. The other thing about, that's interesting about the, the, the request for funds from the government is that I've asked in a setting like this, I said, well, you know, you guys are wanting some help from the government. How many of you pay, or let me be fair here, how many of the people that are in business do you think they pay a fair tax, or do they have a double set of books? Ooh, we got into a little, uh, a little uh, a sensitive spot when I asked that question. And so I asked him, okay, don't tell about yourself, but 
I got the, the, the answer that in one case, well, they figured maybe 20% paid their taxes fairly. I know that taxes are not something I want to pay either, but I pay my taxes fairly. I, other, gov other businesses in the U.S. do, in general, pay their taxes fairly. Not everyone. You can lie. You can cheat. But I don't, and I, there's mo uh, many people don't, because there's a code of ethics, a code of honor. And, but the point in this discussion is, how is the government going to help you with money if the government is being cheated and doesn't get the money that they are due for the services they render? I want good roads. I want a good school. I want uh, good electricity. I want uh, uh, the water to run when I. I want the police to call when I had when I when I need help. You know those things cost money. So let's be honest about it. Well, let's talk about uh, the United States, and, and we're not perfect in this, but I will talk about my dad just a little bit. You know, uh, the my dad was a farmer and rancher, and he was asked and had opportunity to participate in subsidies, farm subsidies. At different times they would pay uh, to set aside land and he, they, but they never gave him money. Like, it's not like, okay, here's just some money because you're a farmer. That the, the idea was behind it that there's many times a loan. I'm just going to say, here's the kind of things. A government it could be in a position to make loans. Guess what? A loan must be paid back. If you don't pay back the loan, you might go and be charged with a crime. So your government could make loans. Well, now how would they make the loans? Only if, in our case, that it's done through an existing bank. An existing bank handles the procedures. They follow the procedures so that the government is loaning money, in essence, through the existing bank because the existing bank is saying to, uh, to the uh, potential uh, business owner, say, you know, your business is just absolutely too risky for me. I can't do that. I'm afraid you won't pay it back. And the government says, well, no, hold it just a second. If they meet certain conditions, maybe we could loan them some money and lower the amount of money that you as a business owner must put down. By the way, as a loan from the government or loan from a bank never is 100%. You must come up or I must come up with a percentage of the money needed for the project. And I will tell you that most of the time, the loans are not for operating expense. That means just to pay the bills. The loans are for things like a building, something like a piece of equipment. In the United States, the loans only come after you can present three years of business experience. That means you've got to get on the stick and make this thing happen without a loan to start with. Uh, startups are just not something people want to loan money for. And so once you have three years of experience, you have some kind of a track record, you're able to pay your bills at the smaller scale, then you might be able to apply for a loan through the bank that the government guarantees or helps with, and then you could get have to put out less cash, but you'll still have to put always at least 10% that's of the money for the project. Well, uh, I have had several assistance from my government for loans. We call it a small business administration loan. And here's how it works. It's called SBA, Small Business Administration. I had more than three years of experience. In most cases, I had five to seven years of experience. I wanted to buy some equipment. I didn't have enough money to buy the equipment, which was fine. I wanted to borrow the money to borrow the, buy the equipment. The typical loan in the U.S. would be that the wanting person borrowing the money would need to be able to put out 30% of the money needed for the equipment or the land. But in this case, the government said, you know, let's just make it a 10% down. In other words, I just had to come up with 10%. And there's different ways that the bank does it. But in essence, I only came up with 10% instead of 30%. So let's say I needed a $100,000 project. Man, I don't actually have $30,000, but I can come up with $10,000. And I have 10, uh, three to five years experience. I have track record. I have taxes. I have my accounting. And here we go. Well... I hope this helps you. I hope you understand that the government should be a part of your business. I hope you have good governments. I hope you have fair governments. I hope your governments can, can make a difference. I hope you can have a good economy nationwide, but it's going to be affected by you as a business owner. Thanks for being a part of IBB Talks, Inspiring Better Business. Please share these. We appreciate being a part of this.